get my six. But most importantly, I want you to get your own six. Oh. Each and every single one of us right now, as we ease back into what our lives were pre-pandemic, has a very special, I would say truly once in a lifetime opportunity, though this is the second opportunity of such that I've had in my lifetime. And I learned from the first experience and I wanna share that with you to maybe help you get through your experience you're gonna go through now for the first time, potentially in your life, the best way you possibly can. <clears throat> So I had a big epiphany while I was running this morning. I just ran for 30 minutes and uh, taking you on my cool down. I like to walk around for 10 or 15 minutes before I move on to the next exercise. Just lifting weights. That's why I'm so buff. But uh, here's what's going on. As of this recording, we're only a couple of days away from uh, the kids going back to school for the first time in nearly two years for many of them because of the pandemic. Our son was at home for two years uh, doing the virtual learning. We loved every minute of it. Uh, it's like we had the benefit of homeschooling. You know, our kid was home with us all the time, but we didn't have to bear the responsibilities of actually be the ones doing the educating because his wonderful, wonderful, wonderful teacher he had last year at his wonderful, wonderful, wonderful school did, did the work for us and she did a great job. But now, He's going, getting ready to go back to the brick and mortar school. I'm going to ease into the woods here, get some shade and see what we may or may not see back here. So here over the last couple weeks or so, as everybody's bit preparing to get back to normal. Yep. I saw it. See if we can get closer. All right, let's just sit here and wait and see if it comes to us. Looks like it's creeping around, peeking in and out behind trees. Just keep watching. So here's the deal. We've been in a few situations where we've been around, well, we've been in groups. Some of these people, uh, people that we haven't seen for a couple of years, uh, it was wonderful getting back around most of them, some of them. Um, okay, let me explain, because you, you're wondering what warning should you heed this might be your last chance ever. Here's a huge benefit of the last two years. While, you know, a lot of people got lonely, a lot of people got down, uh, a lot of people felt as if they were self-isolating because of the pandemic, and a lot of people were. But what happened over the last two years is that most people, especially in American society, had the time and the opportunity to get to know themselves better than they have perhaps in their entire life. A lot of people spent a lot of time alone. A lot of people spent a lot of time with their own thoughts. A lot of people got to re-examine everything about their lives, who they are, what they're doing, how they're living. Um, listen, Many of you watching these videos are, are empaths. You're people who, uh, for one reason or another, uh, can, can draw the energy off of other people uh, to a greater degree than most people. Uh, that's why, as an empath, uh, we've got to, I'm, I identify as an empath, we've got to watch who we surround ourselves with. Because I heard the analogy once, we're kind of like uh, batteries running on low and we, we can take the energy from other people, uh, but the, the problem with that is, is that's, that will determine how we're charged. So if you're hanging around somebody who's toxic, somebody who maybe has some, some mental health issues that are not receiving treatment for these issues, you can suck up some bad energy uh, and it puts you in a bad spot. I'm gonna use an example here for both pro and con. And there is a, there's a very valid point to this. Uh, I'm going to use two people I know 
personally, no, I'm not going to mention them by name. Uh, one, everybody would know if I did. It's a household name. Um, there's an individual we know here who is just a great person. Uh, they've done great things. Uh, they have achieved greatness in their craft. Uh, but despite this, they're very humble. They're very positive. It's easy to see why they got to where they, they, they had gotten to. Uh, when I'm in the presence of this individual, I feel like I want to go out and do something great because that's just the aura this person gives off. That's the energy I receive from this individual. Uh, I will use the example of Muhammad Ali to compare. Now, he used to live just south of us here, right outside of Charlottesville, but it, it, this is not who I'm talking about. This is somebody else. But I've heard other people say the same thing about Ali. I've heard George Foreman say it. I've heard Mike Tyson say it. Just about anybody who talks about Ali in an interview has stated at one point or another that when you're in the presence of Muhammad Ali, you can tell that you're in the presence of greatness. And a lot of fighters who were supposed to beat him, like George Foreman, uh, talked about how he wasn't, you know, a hard puncher. He, he uh, wasn't, per se, the greatest boxer, but Foreman himself calls him the greatest man he's, never, he's, he's ever known. And you could just tell... You were, you were in the presence of greatness, okay? Okay, now inversely, uh, you know, I know, well, more than one individual. I avoid them like the plague, but uh, they'll creep up on you. You got to watch these folks who are very negative, very pessimistic. Uh, a lot of times they can come across as very friendly. They're trying to lure you in. They want to get you hooked, get you smiling, and then they just start coming at you, slicing and dicing with their negative views. Everything's wrong in the world. We're all going to die. The sky's falling, this type. Okay, you can spend five minutes with somebody like this and feel bad for the next five days. So, so think about that. You're in the presence of somebody with a good, positive, and I have a lot of friends and a lot of family members who are very positive, uh, who are not household names, they're not celebrities, but they are very desirable to be around because I personally can feed off of their positivity, okay? And in people that are just so negative, pessimistic, always worrying about the sky falling, they'll get in your head and they will stay there even long after they're gone, okay? Especially if you're an empath. Now listen, a lot of you are saying, what in the heck's an empath? I don't think I'm an empath. That sounds like that new age feel good science stuff. Well, maybe it is, but listen, everybody, everybody is affected by their environment. Every human, every animal. And what we don't take into consideration in regard to being part of our environment enough is other people. The other people that we allow in our presence and the other people whose presence we enter. Okay, so for the last couple of years, a lot of people have been uh, alone, spending a lot of time alone, getting to know themselves better. A lot of people coming out of the pandemic, actually, despite the difficulties and the challenges of the last couple of years, feel better about themselves than they did before. And now... I hear voices. There's no one out here with me, but I get the sense we're not alone. All right, so here's your once in a lifetime opportunity. As you re-enter your social networks, and I'm not talking social media, I'm talking about your actual physical, you're out there getting around people again. Pay very close attention to how you feel when you're in the presence of everybody. When you get back around those old friends or those old acquaintances or people you knew, maybe, you know, other parents that your kids go to school with their kids, pay very close attention to how you feel when you're with them and how you feel after you part ways with these people. Uh, a lot of you watching, and I did this for many, many years, if you got in the presence of somebody who came across as nice, came across as friendly, uh, like a lot of, you know, passive aggressive types or a lot of, uh, people with antisocial personality disorders who are not receiving therapy. But then, then you talk to them for a few minutes, 
because they seemed approachable enough. They seemed friendly enough. But then when they leave, you feel like crap. It's like, why do I feel bad? Until you spend so much time alone with yourself, the answer that probably came to your head was, well, gosh, there must be something wrong with me. This person came across as so friendly, as so nice, and they seemed as if they, 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 you know, they volunteered to be helpful in any way I might ever need them. But then we talked for like another 10 minutes. Why do I feel bad? Gosh, what's wrong with me? Here's the answer. Nothing. Nothing. You were probably lured into a conversation that started out all warm, cozy, and friendly, and then this person went off on a diatribe about their political views, about their worldviews, about... Uh, their worries, their concerns, their fears that have nothing to do with you, that has everything to do with them. Listen, use that way you feel after that person leaves your presence to really determine whether or not you want to spend time with that person again. Now, I mentioned this is the second opportunity in my lifetime I've had. I went for, I, listen, for almost a decade, I lived in a foreign country third world country on a small tiny island and I, I became estranged from everyone and everything I knew from my past that changed about five or six years ago I came back but listen during those years years that I thought were the low point of my life I now look back on and realize were the highlight of my life because I was given the opportunity to, to sit and be with myself like never before Form a relationship with a woman I met there that would become my wife, that would give me our 10-year-old son that's getting ready to go back to school. I got to, okay, so I lost the most important people in my life. I, I gained two new most important people in my life, okay? So then I came back, and I reconnected with some of those folks from my past, and I found, well, first of all, before we even go there, when I came back here, uh, to the U.S. and I brought my family with me and I would get around people I could see things so differently because I could tell now it wasn't me if I got around somebody that seemed warm and fuzzy up front but then once we get into a 10 minute conversation really about nothing I could feel their energy I could feel if like the individual I didn't name but that I mentioned first the, the guy who has done some great things. Man, when I talk to that guy, I feel like just dropping everything I'm doing and going out there and doing something great. I mean, a five-minute casual conversation with this person motivates me for days because I know where he came from and I know where he made it to. And I think, man, I can do the same thing. And he's putting off the energies, letting everybody know around him know that they can go out and do the same thing. And I make my best efforts to go out and try to do the same thing. Whether it's with you know a YouTube video, whether it's with a short story I'm working on, or maybe a full-length novel or a collection of short stories, or even just my exercise, my daily fitness routine. I try to do it better than I've done it in weeks because I spend time with this guy. So, And then also I could identify others earlier, the passive-aggressive uh, looking you know, to, to, to come around maybe to take advantage or just... Somebody to stand there to be their sounding board while they go on and on about how terrible the world is, about how miserable life is, all these. I'm sorry, but after 10 years of third world living, it's hard for me to sit around and listen to somebody cry about first world problems. That might sound callous, but okay. So anyway, many of you coming out of this pandemic now find yourself in the same situation You've had time to get to know yourself. You've had time to get to know who you are. And likewise, to get back to what I was talking about, when I made my reconnections, I was happy to see many of the people uh, still have that positive attitude. They always had, happy to reconnect. A couple of them kind of kind of were on the outs with because we, we were, me and those people were kind of had some tox, toxicity up here. I was happy to see some of these folks got the help they needed, as I feel I did as well, and now our relationships are stronger than they've ever been. And I've found that some people are still highly toxic and don't seem to want to get better, and so I'm loving them from a, from a distance, from a very far distance. And if those folks ever want to get help uh, and get better and become healthy, I'll love them up close and personal. But I'm... I learned not to allow other people's problems to become my problems, not to allow other people's negative toxicity to become my negative toxicity because that's what it becomes. So now as we're coming out of this pandemic, 
keep all this in mind as you get back around people, you start conversations you haven't had with people in a long time. Listen to that gut instinct. Listen to it. If you leave somebody's presence and you feel better than you did before you were in their presence, that person's probably worthy of being with again. If you leave someone's present presence and you feel much worse than you did before you were in their presence, you might not you might not want to return to their presence. You don't have to dislike them. Uh, just protect yourself. Be healthy. Take heed. Heed this warning. This may be the last opportunity you get. We'll see you for more next time from here at Homesteading Off the Grid and whatever the hell this channel's about.